this section we will talk about network access control. Uh, guys, in this lesson we'll talk about multiple network access control technologies such as uh, 802.1x, MAC authentication bypass, web authentication which is also known as the web out as well as next generation NAC technologies such as TrustSec and the MacSec. Dot one x is a standard for port-based network access control that provides an authentication mechanism for local area networks and wireless local area networks. Dot one x guys, dot one x authentication involves three parties. The first party is you can see in here that is the supplicant. The second party is authenticator. And the third one is the authentication server. So the supplicant, uh, simply this is a client device that wishes to attach to the LAN or wireless LAN. The term supplicant is also used interchangeably to refer to the software running on the client that provides credentials to the authenticator. The authenticator is a network device which provides a data link between the client and the network and can allow or block network traffic between two, such as an internet switch or wireless access point. And the authentication server is typically a trusted server that can receive and respond to requests for network access and can tell the authenticator if the connection is to be allowed and various settings that should apply to the client's connection or setting. Authentication servers typically run software supporting the RADIUS and the EAP protocols. In some cases, the authentication server software may be running on the authenticator hardware. The authenticator guys acts like a security guard to protect a network. The supplicant, I mean the client device, is not allowed access through the authenticator to the protected side of the network until the supplicant's identity has been validated and authorized. With that one export authentication, uh, the supplicant must initially provide the required credentials to authenticator. This will have been specified in advance by the network administrator and cloud and, and could include a username password or a permitted digital certificate. The authenticator forwards these credentials to the authentication server to decide whether access is to be granted. If the authentication server determines the credentials are valid, it informs the authenticator, which in turn allows the supplicant to devise access resources located on the protected side of the network. Let's go ahead with the MAC authentication bypass. This is an access control technique uh, that enables port-based access control using the MAC addresses of an endpoint and it is typically used as a fallback mechanism to dot one x A MAB enabled port can be dynamically enabled or disabled based on the MAC addresses of the endpoint that connects to it. Let's go ahead with the web out. In an organization guys, endpoints that try to connect to the network might not have dot one x supplicants and might not know the MAC address to perform MAB. These endpoints can be employees and the contractors with misconfigured .1x settings that require access to the corporate network or visitors and guests that need access to internet. For these cases, WebAuth can be used. With WebAuth, uh, endpoints are presented with a web portal 
requesting a username and password. The username and password that are submitted through the web portal are sent from the switch to the Radius server in a standard Radius access request packet. In a very similar way that to what occurs with MAB, the switch sends the request on behalf of the endpoint to the Radius server because the endpoint is not authenticating directly to the switch. Unlike MAB, WebAuth is the only for users and not devices since it requires a web browser and manual username and a password. There are two types of the web out and they are local web authentication and the centralized web authentication with Cisco ISE. When it comes to the uh, local web authentication, that is the first form of web authentication that was created. For this type of web auth, uh, the switch redirects web traffic to a locally hosted web portal running in the switch where an end user can enter a username and the password. Cisco then created centralized web authentication to overcome uh, local web authentications deficiencies, guys. CWA supports all the advanced services such as client provisioning, posture assessment, acceptable use policies, password changing, self-registration, and etc. Let's go with TrustSec. TrustSec uh, is a next generation access control enforcement solution developed by Cisco again to address the growing operational challenges related to maintaining firewall rules and ACLs by using SGT security group tags. TrustSec uses SGT tags to perform ingress tagging and egress filtering to enforce access control policy. Cisco ISE guys uh, assigns the SGT tags to users or devices that are successfully authenticated and authorized through .1x, MAB or WebAuth. The SGT tag assignment is delivered to the authenticator as an authorization option. After the SGT tag is assigned, an access enforcement policy that can be an allow or drop based on the SGT tag can be applied at any egress point of the TrustSec network. GT tags uh, represent the context of the user, device, use case or function. This means SGT tags are often named after particular roles or business use cases. For example, a corporate user with a Mac that successfully authenticates via .1x using EAP chaining could be assigned an SGT by ISE named Mac-Corporate. If the Mac is not compliant with the posture requirements because it is not owned by the corporation, then it can be assigned an SGT named Mac-Guest. This uh, figure on the screen illustrates a list of default SGT tags on Cisco ISE. Notice that the SGT tags uh, all have business relevant names and the descriptions you can see in here. The name is the auditors, contractors, developers, development servers, employees, guests, and BYOD. The SGT name is available on Cisco ISE and network devices to create policies. What is actually inserted into a layer 2 frame SGT tag is a 
numeric value like the ones shown in the SGT column in decimal and hexadecimal notation. As you can see the SGT column in here. Okay. MaxSec is an IEEE 802.1 AE standards based layer 2 hop by hop encryption method. This means the traffic is encrypted only on the wire between two MaxSec peers and is unencrypted as it is processed internally within the switch. This allows uh, the switch to look into the inner packets for things like SGT tags to perform packet enforcement or QoS prioritization. MaxSec also leverages onboard ASICs to perform the encryption and the decryption rather than having to offload to a crypto engine such as uh, with the IPsec. When it comes to the MaxSec frame format, MaxSec is based on the Ethernet frame format. However, in an additional 16 byte of MaxSec security tag field and a 16 byte integrity check value ICV fields are added. This means that all devices in the flow of the MaxSec communications must support MaxSec for these fields to be used and secure the traffic. MaxSec guys provides authentication using Galois method authentication code or authenticated encryption using Galois counter mode advanced encryption standard. Two MaxSec keying mechanisms are available and they are security association protocol. This is a proprietary Cisco keying protocol used between Cisco switches and MaxSec key agreement MKA protocol. MKA provides the required session keys and manages the required encryption keys guys. MKA provides the required session keys and the manages the required encryption keys. The 802.1 AE encryption with MKA is supported between endpoints and the switch as well as between switches. So uh, there's a term that is the downlink MaxSec. The downlink MaxSec is the term used to describe the encrypted link between an endpoint and a switch. The encryption between the endpoint and the switch is handled by the MKA keying protocol. This requires a MaxSec capable switch and a MaxSec capable supplicant on the endpoint. The encryption on the endpoint may be handled in hardware or in software using the main CPU for decryption and encryption. The Cisco switch has the ability to force encryption, make encryption optional or force non-encryption. This setting may be configured manually per port or dynamically as an authorization option from Cisco ISE. If ISE returns an encryption policy with the authorization result, the policy issued by ISE overrides anything set using the switch CLI. Uplink MaxSec is the term for encrypting a link between switches with 802.1 AE. By default, Uplink MaxSec uses Cisco proprietary SAP encryption. The encryption is the same ISGCM128 encryption used with both Uplink and Downlink MaxSec. Uplink MaxSec may be achieved manually or dynamically and, and the dynamic MaxSec requires .1x authentication between the switches.